Lucky Scrum Subscribers, I hope you are having a lovely day, and welcome to the second out of three videos? I can't remember, did I, did I promise three? It'll be three. <laughs> uh, videos of Inktober 2017. Um, if this is your first video, I highly recommend you watch the intro video and the video before that so you can just see what my plans are for Inktober and some of the progress I've made so far, because I am, I have resolved to do all 31 days. Even though people like to do 30 days, but I go for every day of the month just because. <laughs> um, but for those of you who have just been following along and want a little bit of a refresher, I am doing pictures inspired by stories from a book called Myths and Folklore of Ireland. And it's been so much fun. <laughs> I've been really enjoying this. I'll put a link to my Instagram in the description too if you want to have more time to look at some of the pieces that I'm just flipping through here. I did record one speed paint-ish or time lapse, I should say. Um it turned out to come from one of my favorite stories in the book. I may describe this story just a little bit because it is kind of a, a long one. Um but before I get into that, I'll just say that uh this will be days 20 it'll be days hang on. <laughs> got to think back here. This is days 11 to 23, because even though as I'm uploading this, it's day 24, I'm still in the pro process of sketching and lining the piece because I want to save it for the third day. <laughs> it just, ah, just the scenario cracks me up. Any hoosies. Um, if you guys are doing Inktober, let me know how you guys are holding up. Um, I've been following along with some people on Twitter for sure. And, um, I've been trying to watch some YouTube videos too, but then there's that point where it's like, are you watching because you're procrastinating or are you watching because you're actually interested? And usually it's both. <laughs> uh, this picture. So I'll talk about the time-lapse one. And just as I'm flipping through, you'll uh, see that I've actually dedicated three pictures to this story. This one you're seeing right now being inked is the first of the three. So it'll be the two after that. And it starts off with a prince who is being threatened by death from three other princes. And he ends up going off on a journey to try and figure out like what he can possibly do. Cause he's not, you know, he's still kind of young. They met in school. So that tells me they're either teenage years, young adult. So he happens to pass by this graveyard and they're very appropriate kitty. <laughs> Those are the souls trying to escape. <laughs> and um, he spots these four brothers who are arguing with a coffin beside them. And he's, you know, he only takes just a little bit of money with him. So it's not like he's got like a, it's not like he has to stop his horse or anything. And um, he stops by and it's like, what's going on here? You know? And the first two brothers are like, we want to bury our, or the first two men are like, we want to bury our brother who is in this coffin. And the other two are like, no, he has a debt to be paid. We can't bury him until it's paid, you know? And so the prince takes what little money he has and gives it to them. And then he just goes on his way with now next to nothing but the coals on his back. <laughs> not the smartest idea, but you know, that's what makes me assume that this prince is pretty young because he's probably not thinking about preparing and so I'm just like, I'm just going to go and find out <laughs> what I could do. Because um, this isn't the first instance of a prince or royalty leaving the castle, but they usually take a moment in the book to say, he took his horse with him and, you know, stood up and took three days worth of food. You know, there's usually a sort of like preparation that in advance, pretty good preparation at the very least and this guy just takes five five pounds <laughs> that's all he does and he's just got the clothes on his back and it's kind of sad which is why it doesn't really come as much as a surprise when after he leaves the graveyard um this man approaches him who is really sprightly and has like bright red hair and i don't know why i decided to add that in but <laughs> um, but he pretty much decides to help him. And along their journey, he helps him gain certain treasures from giants. They 
eat and sleep very and are treated very well as guests on their journey thanks to this seemingly stranger's good intentions and you know throughout the story they just seem it seems like they form a bond because the moment that they take one of the last treasures from the giant which is like it's like the harry potter's cloak of invisibility they call it the cloak of darkness but it's it's, it does the same thing as a cloak of invisibility. He turns himself invisible and the prince, like, he starts to grieve and he, he's like, he's really upset. And so, I don't know. I kind of started shipping it, maybe. <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> I can't help it because the story I read before this too, I will say, was one of the worst stories I read just because some of the characters were just flat out terrible to each other. And I was really, I found this new story somewhat refreshing and I kind of clung to it because I was afraid. I'd never read, I've never read this book before. I didn't even open it until day one of October. And I didn't know if there were going to be any decent stories after the one I had just read because a lot of them had been really violent and that one was the same. <laughs> so when it turned out that this one was actually kind of sweet and at the very least these two became really good friends you can tell because he not only the stranger that calls himself shaking head ends up helping the prince not only get these treasures but then he tries he helps to get the prince married off to get him an army and pretty much take care and just take like make sure he's taken care of and ultimately there is also another reason behind it which I guess I will spoil it here I don't know the to spoil or not to spoil because it was a pretty big twist mm. here I'll give you like five seconds if you want to skip one two three four five okay Spoiler. <laughs> um, it turns out that Shaking Head is actually the man who was in the coffin when the prince had met the four men trying to bury their brother. And thanks to his kindness, Shaking Head's like, I will help you in, you know, paying it forward. But to me personally, I feel like he could have done a lot. He could have gotten away with doing a lot less. He did so much for this guy. So much. He Again, because this boy, he had like next to nothing. And at the end of the story, he ends up getting married, taking over. Get, and because of the army that Shaking Head helps gather for him, not only do they end up defeating the other three princes, but they were of different prov provinces in this whole area. So after the king, his father retires, he takes over that whole area, including those provinces. So... It's like, dang, <laughs> which actually really, you know what? I think the moral behind it, because I was actually really, I wasn't really bent on finding morals in these stories. I was just kind of taking them as they were. I think one of the morals of the story is even if you don't feel like you have much, if you give and if you are generous, then it definitely can be like multiply a tenfold. Then again, also keep in mind that he gave from what little he had and he didn't expect anything in return. I think that's the key element too. He ended up being, you know, I guess you could say you're compensated. I don't like that word though. Just repaid, I guess. I don't even like that either. He just ended up being blessed a tenfold. There we go. Because of his, because of that kindness. Cause he really did have, it literally said in the book, other than what he was born with, in his clothes there was nothing else he had with him and this was a prince too which is like really very unexpected to see in a story so I think that struck a chord with me and I really ended up liking that story the most um and a lot of the other stories are pretty enjoyable too it just I don't know that one just <laughs> it just got it just got to me and um yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that um, I've enjoyed the story and uh, I think this commentary has gone on long enough. Thanks again, everybody, for watching and for your support. And if, again, if you're doing Inktober, good luck. You know, we're like a week away. You can do it. I I believe in you. You got this. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll be talking to you guys in my next video.
I hope you're having a lovely, I hope you have a lovely week, too. I should add that in. And don't eat too much candy for Halloween. You want to get sick. Sam, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Thanks again. And until next time.